John T. Draper is a familiar name in the hacking community, mainly because he was one of the first members of the public to hack uninvited into a remote system. In the 60s, he discovered that a free toy whistle in a packet of Cat'n Crunch could produce a perfect 2600 Hz tone, and by sounding it down a telephone, it enabled him to obtain free long distance phone calls. This was a method of controlling telephone switches known as Freaking, which actually led to his imprisonment, thereby becoming one of the first criminal hackers. Fast forward to the 1980s and with modems and personal computers popping up left, right and centre, a new glorious world was opening up, with films such as War Games capturing this wonderful new land of hacking potential. I don't think that I deserved an F, do you? By 1990, a great war was occurring behind the scenes, between some of the largest hacking groups. On one side, the Legion of Doom, or at least a splinter faction of it after its purported demise, and on the other side, the Masters of Deception, each group trying to outdo the other with more ingenious and elaborate hacks. Because as well as political motivation, revenge, demonstration, or simply dislike, simple notoriety was high on the list of reasons to hack. However, with notoriety, of course, comes visibility, and it wasn't long before the FBI were on their tracks. With members of both groups, including Mark Abene, the head of Masters of Deception, ending up behind bars for several years. Sympathies among other hackers and a feeling of injustice for hackers receiving more time than serious crimes, with real world victims, of course, would lead to more hacks. And so, with the rise of the internet, the hacking playground was growing, and to police this playground, laws were brought into place to try and keep order, including the Computer Misuse Act of 1990. These were tentative days, filled with GeoCities, AltaVista, Ask Jeeves, low resolution, low colour, GIFs, more GIFs, never ending GIFs, perhaps some GIFs as well, crap fonts, oh and lots of keyword spamming. This was a domain, if you'll excuse the pun, where many people were just getting to grips with what they were doing, and so as you'd expect, knowledge was thin on the ground. This was never more apparent than system and website security. So then, welcome to my top website hacks of the 1990s. Before we begin, just be sure to flex your neck muscles so you can look away when appropriate. 20th of September 1996 and the CIA website. Now here's what it should look like. You can see the red writing. Unauthorized modification of any information stored on this system may result in criminal prosecution. And here's what it looked like shortly after. Now this is a hack by Swedish group Power Through Resistance. This was in response to Swedish prosecutor Bo Skarinda prosecuting five people for hacking earlier that week. You can see their message stating, F*** you to the Central Intelligence Agency World Wide Website. But we already know you're all lame assholes. Now this is a demonstration of hackers banding together, and supporting their own in the best way they know how to, and although it didn't remain up for long, it was enough to reach CNN News at the time. You can see the usual links are long gone, and instead we can navigate to the Hackers Defense Foundation, Flashback News Agency, and a few more places, including NUDE GIRLS! Yeah, you'll find this is a running theme throughout hacked sites of the 90s. Okay, 12th of December 1996, and we cross the pond for the British Labour Party. Here's how Tony Blair looked originally, in this sparse but easy to navigate site. And here we are, post-hack. As you can see, nothing has changed. Oh, my bad, some links have changed. The budget response, more of those lies all parties feed you close to an election. Hilarity. The road to nowhere. New information, same old lies, new packaging. And so on, along with a nice hacked labour image. At the time you might have been hard pressed to spot the difference, but here we have a politically motivated hack, albeit a light hearted one by the group AOHP. 
It's only there then that we visit the Conservative Party page on the 27th of April 1997. Here's the Right Honourable John Major MP, looking much like John Major, and then... Well, again, it's hard to notice the difference. I'm just kidding. Now here we have a much more focused political attack with a long message. It basically boils down to the Conservatives claiming that all communication breakthroughs started under their governments, and the hackers pointing out that they had actually nothing to do with the breakthroughs, they just happened to be in power. There also seems to be an EU flag, which seems appropriate. Now, back across the pond, this one is interesting if only for the fact that it stayed up for an entire week. I mean, this was a time when IT was sparse and slow to act. It's the Legal Employment Network, who apparently specialise in providing legal employment to hookers and strippers, so they can f- Yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, this was hacked by the individuals MADS, WarB, PowerRT, Dell, KNS. Nice work, lads. Okay, now here we have probably the most targeted organisation on the web, in this part of the 90s at least. It had been hacked twice in December 1996 by Storm with some pretty graphical content, but it was also very possibly the first time a hacked site had had JavaScript and frames. You remember frames, don't you? They used to be all the rage in the 90s. They allowed you to have different sections of a website page. You could scroll at your own will. Anyway, here was now a different hack on the 5th of March 1997. This time we have the sympathetic pleas of Haggis acknowledging the plight of Kevin Mitnick, one of the most notorious hackers of the time, and actually the first hacker to appear on an FBI Most Wanted poster for wire fraud and various other hacks within the preceding two years. Good on you, Kevin. This page states that he's been rotting in a prison cell for two years over his desire to learn and still hasn't gone to trial. It also talks of Ed Cummings thrown into prison for possessing nothing more than a couple of pieces of electronics from Radio Shack. If that's the case, then I am in a whole heap of bother. 8th of December 1997, and it was Yahoo's turn. Now, this was no small fry, because Yahoo was a huge player back in the 90s. It was one of the main portals to the web, offering email, news, and a pretty good search engine for the time. Do you, uh, Yahoo? So anyone who could pull off an attack here was, well, clearly ahead of the class. It would take the combined powers of pants and Haggis to try and hold the US government to ransom by demanding the release of, yep, you guessed it, Kevin Mitnick. For the past month, anyone who has viewed Yahoo's page and used their search engine now has a logic bomb slash worm implanted deep within their computer. That's the fear tactic which was used here with an offer of an antidote program if Kevin is released. An interesting attack which was clearly false and relied on fear. The only problem was, this hack was only up for 15 minutes and could only be seen by certain browsers. Comments on the CNN message board relating to this were, By the way, who was this infamous imprisoned comrade these geeks wanted released? Does anyone know? Knowing who it is would be a good way to track down the hackers. And that's from Grant Webster. Thank you, Grant. And we also had a sparky member of the public deciphering the alphanumeric part of the ransom to read, Hey, Mr. Security Expert, if you're so something, how come you're always getting owned by us ankle biters? But the best bit here is what their virus would do. Apparently, one of the functions was it will cause an acceleration of clocks to the year 2000. Yes, they used the Millennium Bug as a threat! Oh no! Anything but that! It just goes to show how much fear and frenzy was whipped up concerning the Y2K Critter, which as we know, actually did very little. Popping back to the 27th of May, and we visit the Jurassic Park Lost World promo site. Now here's a hack by the originally named Hackers, which was up for 12 hours 
just four days after the film's release. Now, if this was for the original film, then I might be upset, but this is The Lost World, so the sentiment here is entirely justified. 14th of November 1997, and it's the turn of the Spice Girls, or at least the Spice World page of their website. You remember that movie, don't you? Here we go. The backlash has started. Yeah, of course you do. Essentially, this is a hack to plea for them to stop making music, courtesy of Team Code Zero. I don't know about you, but I'm quite partial to some. It's amazing how much clipping music in the 90s had. Okay, how about something a little more serious? A website which you might think would have the highest security possible and therefore be completely unhackable. Well, hello there, US Army. The day is Sunday the 8th of March 1998, and those sly little dogs of annoyed crew have been hard at work hacking three separate United States Army servers. They took little time in promoting how incredible their hack had been. This is where it happens, where some of the most advanced US Army software is developed. This hack is once again proving that any network, no matter how large, is exploitable. I like your jib, Noid. The aim here seems to be to alert the public about how exploitable these pages are, a kind of public service announcement, and also how the media are in the government's pocket. It wasn't up for long, but to make sure they got the point across, the next day they went after the US Navy, detailing their views on, well, how crap the government is at keeping their sh** secure. I guess the person they really should have been talking to was Bill Clinton, if he wasn't too occupied, that is. Welcome to MonicaLewinsky.com, hacked by Magic FX on the 5th of March, 1999. The original isn't even a proper site, it's more of a holding page registered on behalf of Ms. Lewinsky. However, she never took up the offer to use it and explain her story. So, it was hacked. This was right after Ms. Lewinsky had informed an entire nation, well, actually the world, that the president's wife couldn't do it for him. Yes. You did? Yes. Here then we have a fervid supporter of, well, common decency and manners, I guess. Because both Clinton and Lewinsky are given a thorough telling off in the following paragraphs. The whole situation makes me sick. What has happened to this country? The president is supposed to be a role model for the youth of America, and what does he do? If you ask me, we need to bring this kind of hacking back. Now people just put out YouTube videos or send out a tweet to share their feelings. Back in the 90s, you had to hack a goddamn website to tell the world what you thought. You had to know what you were doing. At the very least, it ensured those who wanted to be heard learned some technical skills along the way. Oh, incidentally, the same day, PuppyPower.com was also hacked. Similar theme. Even though this video is based around events which happened 20 years ago and websites which no longer exist, YouTube refused to monetize it. So instead, I've opted for a relevant sponsor. After all, what better than to go with a company invested in the freedom of our internet? Surfshark VPN is the name, and I cannot stress how important it is to have a VPN for all kinds of situations. For one, I've been the victim of online fraud before, and if you're using public Wi-Fi hotspots, so could you. The internet is a very different place to what it was in the 90s. Back then it was a naive, homely, hobby-filled place which was full of glee and wonder. Now, wherever you go, you're tracked. You're tracked by your location, you're tracked by your choices, and that means you're blocked from some services in other countries. Surfshark will protect you from all of this. What's more, Surfshark appears to be the cheapest you can get this level of protection. We're talking $1.99 a month for unlimited connections. Using code NERD will get you one month free, plus that sweet, sweet 83% off. Nice. This isn't the 90s, so get yourself protected and follow the link below. And I guess now we can get back to the 90s. Which brings me on to the final hack for this episode, occurring on the 4th of April 1999 and spread across several famous domains, including Playboy, Sprint, Yellow Pages, Sony Music, and even HornyRob.com. 
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Not horny Rob. But when you're as horny as Rob, apparently web security has a tendency to slide. The replacement is this site featuring a UK flag emblazoned with Yorkshire Posse. Big ups to you guys. But the main theme is explained here. As you read this, the RCMP, NASA and the FBI are persecuting a man in Sudbury, Ontario with 99 criminal charges. Just what exactly did he do? Well, read on to be schooled. This is the comeuppance for Jason Muini, for apparently defacing the NASA webpage. You remember, we've just spoken about it. It appears that the Yorkshire Posse are making a declaration of war against all that would challenge the freedom of Canadians with such ludicrous actions. They go on to say, we have broken into your phone companies, your breweries, and everything else you hold sacred. Wait a second, breweries? These lads are making a serious political statement, and they're off for a slash up. You can tell they're from Yorkshire. Anyway, that's enough hacking for now. It feels like hacking sites in this way is a pastime we've let go of, we've forgotten. A way of life that's been replaced with social media and shouting into a void. It's a shame, but at least we can look back and relive it through the magic of YouTube. Maybe if we had that in the 90s, things would have been very different. I mean, for one, the buffering times and quality would have been utterly disastrous. If you liked this video, please let me know by thumbing up or thumbing down, or leaving a comment with a hack that you've heard of from the past. And then maybe I can look at some more top internet hacks of the 90s. There's certainly plenty more to see, let me tell you that. And I've seen some horrible, horrible things. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, have a great evening.